only let him for 27. Well, is it true? Look for yourself, sir. We learn from a live resource that following on the success of our glorious U-boats has been decided to... So now we know, sir. Reception? Packet Emirati. We want, want a room. room. I want a room for my wife and myself. Sorry. For love. But we were only married today. He has to join his ship tomorrow. 29. I may have to turn you out. Come on, then. Register first. Captain Hart. You'll need a diving suit, orderly. He's still at sea. You 29 came to moorings an hour ago, sir. Who'd be a U-boat, Captain? A left side, a Captain. Come up to my room. Very good, sir. Well, Lottie, Captain Richter wants another manicure. Room 46. I know. Well? Captain Hart report to headquarters immediately. He hasn't arrived yet. What is his room number? 54. Have you seen him? Not for 16 days. Do you know him by sight? No. Well, try the Turkish baths in the Königstrasse. The Turkish baths down in the Königstrasse. Hello, Hans. Captain Merrill. 54, Captain Hart. The cigarettes. Sorry, Captain, we've sold out. Again? Plenty of tobacco. And I've got a beautiful pipe. That's only six marks. Nothing doing, Hans. I never smoke a pipe. Come on, Schuster. Bath and shave before we eat. Do you think any food chips? Four. Makes me hungry to think of it. Sixteen days without a smoke. This is absolutely perfect. Food first. Cigar said it's best after dinner. You're always right, sir. Back again, Captain. Congratulations. A table for two? And a meal for ten. I'll put you in the alcove. They're just going. Felix, darling! After dinner, Schuster. Now listen, Fritz, we've been 16 days on that submarine. That makes 48 tins of sardines, 768 beastly little fishes. I could eat a horse. He probably will. Sorry, gentlemen. It's a meatless day. Well, then, uh, we'll have a uh, roast goose, a turn of foie gras, apple strudel, plum pudding, big as a depth charge. Oh, gentlemen, please. Here is the menu. Thank you. A jerk boiled fish. Carrots, beetroot, potatoes. No potatoes, sir. Bring us a pile of bread and butter. Uh, no butter, sir. We may have margarine tomorrow, perhaps. So, we pave the sea with the finest food the world produces. And when we return to port, they give us boiled oh, fish and carrots. I agree. Captain Hart, message from headquarters to report immediately. Carry on as she goes, quartermaster. As she goes, sir. What an idea, putting a motorbike on a submarine. 11.15, sir. 11.14. Anything to stop us opening the kit bag now, sir? 11.15, sir. 11.15, gentlemen. What does 
say about the motorbike, sir? What have you got there, Schuster? A chart of the Orkney mine defences. I've got a photograph of the old man of Hoy. Seems to be a rendezvous. Three degrees, twenty-five to... Well, it's off my chart. No, it's on the map here. Here we are. Gentlemen, we are on a special mission. Our orders are to proceed immediately to this point near Scapa Flow in the Orkney Islands. It's a big job and a dangerous one. I know I can count on you and the men. That's all. Thank you. Hartman, full speed ahead. Yes, sir. Three to order, please. Three to order, sir. Schuster. Yes, sir. Now for your motorbike. It will take me to Long Hope on the island of Hoy, base of the British Grand Fleet. Once across the minefields, choose a favorable night and land here at the foot of the old men of Hoy. Lieutenant Schuster will take over the command and will await your return. We'll proceed to the schoolhouse at Long Hope, where you will report to our agent, Volantine. Woman, what she likes, sir? Tall, dark, 21. My type. You have to shave, sir. See what's in the kit bag. Still don't see what's so clever about the motorbike. Schuster, a man just landed from a German submarine wouldn't be traveling on a motorbike. Ah, camouflage. Ah, camouflage. A suit of well-worn tweeds. That's the thing for Scotland. A bit big for me, sir. Fit you, all right. That's a suit of mine. I bought it from Hoffman in Berlin. and Conway, Severo, London, Ernest, Ernest, H-A-R-T. Your name, sir, spelled in the English way. <laughs> Clever, stolen my own suit, tried to make a spy out of me. This is Fräulein Thiel, sir. Isn't a photograph of her, Would you like to know how they propose getting her into the schoolhouse at Long Hope? That's their business. It's nearly four, the carrier will be here, and there's nothing ready. Coming. Look out! Oh, my poor paint. The handle broke. Now, oh, Yield, there's nothing else. Mammy, darling, I'd love my holiday every minute. It'd be a queer thing if I didn't know how to look after you. I've had plenty of practice. Then the stand grin and there, you chauffeur. Fix on label. I thought you might like to have this. And now you've dropped your passport. Was there ever such butterfingers? It's a photograph of John and me. And, and you're giving it to me. I've lots more. Thousands were printed. It's beautiful. Reverend John Harris, vicar of St. Swithin's, and his fiancée, Miss Anne Belknap, who's been given the appointment to take charge of the school at one of the Orkney Islands. You'll miss him, dearie. Oh, well, he's promised to come and see me on the island if he can get leave from the dean. <laughs> There's a great motor car stopping at the gate. Would it be too much trouble to ask for some tea? Trouble's far in here, sir. But you'll have to wait till I get this young lady on her way. Maggie, the bag. We're waiting for the carrier. Aye, ah, yes. she's catching the night train to Thurzo. Will you excuse me a minute? Thurzo, you're going up north? I'm going to the Orkney Islands. Isn't that where they say the fleet is? I have a job there as a schoolmistress. It's four o'clock. My train leaves at five. It's very strange about Sandy Ross being late. I've always been able to set my clock by him. Sandy Ross? Ah, he's the carrier. Have you seen him? Well, we saw an old car with the name Alexander Ross on it. It seemed to have broken down. Where? About five miles back. Land oh, no. sakes. Well, would it matter very much if you caught a later train? Terribly, I've got to catch the boat to Stromness. It would mean losing a whole day. Maggie, Maybe. run for Mr. McLeod. We'll have to borrow the hearse. No, wait. Wait a moment. I think I can run you to the station. Oh, that'll be lovely. Oh, yeah. Really, but your tea. Oh, that doesn't matter. It's certainly the hand of Providence that brought you here today. Come along. Maggie, put Miss Anne's things in the car. We are taking this young lady to Dingwall. Be sure to keep warm, dearie. She's a terror for taking calls. If ever there was a buddy a blessing in disguise, it's yourself. Hold tight to your passport now. And don't forget to wear your woolies. It's terrible cold up there at night. I'll nights. take care. I've never have thought of you as a school teacher. Oh, but I am. I was educated at Bristol University. I got my degree there. Never again. I had to do something after mother and father died. No money. 
What was your father? Oh, he was an architect, but not very lucky. He only had one good job that I remember, a public house in Chester, and he didn't like that very much because he was a teetotaler. And you lived at Chester? Yes, in Putnam Street. And this place that you're going to, the Orkney Islands? Have you any friends there? Not a soul. Oh, but if John can get away, he's coming over to see me. Who's John? My fiancé. Would you like to see his photograph? Very much. Yes, she's quite good looking. Uh, but these Orkney Islands, I thought it was quite impossible for civilians to go there in water. It is. There was a terrible fuss getting my passport. But you got it? Oh, yes. Here it is. It's complete with photograph. Isn't it terrible? Yes, well, passport photographs are never very flattering. Haven't you taken the wrong road? This is the road to Dingwall, isn't it, Edwards? Yes, madam. It's probably only a shortcut. Quite sure you're not cold? Oh, no, really, I love this. But remember what your old nurse said. Edwards, give Miss Burnett the Shetland scarf. <laughs> really, I don't want it. I'm not at ah, all cold. Now, now, you mustn't catch cold. Alles in Ordnung. Dann halten Sie sich fest. Hier bringen wir Miss Burnett vor den Tee. Miss Anne Burnett? Yes. School teacher? Yes. This picture doesn't really do you justice. I thought it as good as most passport photographs. Destination? Longhope. Age? 21. Married or single? Engaged. Oh. Fast. Thank you. Miss? Yes, please. What time do we get to Longhurst? In about an hour, miss. You're the only passenger for there, except some telephone linesman. Oh, thank you. Make a fast there! All of you on the water patrol? What do you think? Six? Six. I'll pass you. Fine passage, James. Oh. You think so, do you, Walter? That's all very well for you. All you have to do is stand up there at the end of the bridge but me. Well, it's a miracle how I keep the old rattle trap turning. Now, listen. My bottom ends, Walter. When am I going to get a day in port to see to them? Uh, we'll see about it, James. Well, I hope so. You with the new school teacher? Yes. She'll be a nice change from the last one. The youngsters called her wall-eyed Maggie. Have you got your pass? Yes. I'm the special constable here, you understand. See that? Orkney Constabulary, that's me, for the duration. Nobody goes on or off this pier without my knowing it. 
Miss Anne Burnett. Yes. I'll pass you. Bob Black's money, Miss Burnett. If you come with me, there's a minister and his wife here to meet you. Thank you. I'll take it. Shut that door. All right, here, Master. This is the Reverend Hector Matthews, uh, my wife. Oh, how kind of you to meet me. Welcome to Welcome Longhope. Welcome to Longhope. We were thinking maybe you might prefer a room at the manse to living away up at the schoolhouse. Well, that's very kind of you, but you see... My wife agrees with me that it would be highly improper for so young a girl to be on her own. I'm accustomed to looking after myself. Mrs. Matthews is a thrifty housekeeper. <laughs> You'd find her charges very reasonable. Oh, I'm sure of that. Shall we discuss it some other time? Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll put you on your road, Miss Burnett. Shut that door. All right, dear master. Fifty feet, pump on four auxiliary. Pump on four auxiliary. Dead slow. Dead slow, sir. Stop the pump. Shut four auxiliary. Stop the pump. Shut four auxiliary. Eighty feet. Eighty feet, sir. Flat fives. Flat five. Hold that eighty feet. Hot. Funny how cold feet make a man steam. Grab something. Did you hear? You wouldn't have heard if you had. Whew. Well, gentlemen, I think we are through. Whoever got the chart of that minefield deserves the Iron Cross. Yes, we shouldn't have had even a wooden one without it. Stop motors. Stop both. Stop both, sir. Can you hear anything? No, sir. Nothing. Good. I'm going up. 30 feet. 30 feet, sir. Up past four. Stand by to surface. Stand by to surface. Main vent shut, sir. Blow once. Blow once. Blow twos and threes. Blow twos and threes. Twenty-five. Twenty. Fifteen. Stop blowing. Stop Action blowing. stations. Shall we run over the details for the last time? I think I'm likely to forget them. Just to make sure. Ready, Smith? Uh -huh. Top of the cliff. Bear northeast for circle of upright stones. From there? Follow telegraph poles, rough road. Look out for? Main road. After three miles. Turn right. Carry on until road forks. Bear left. What about the milestone? Stop and look for signal west northwest. The woman's name? Volunteer. Motorcycle ashore, sir. All right. Password? Ich weiß nicht, was soll es bedeuten, dass ich so... Now, what are you two smiling at? You, sir. Spouting poetry in the dark to a woman. <laughs> You think it's so funny, you know what you can do with it. Come on. We will report here at the same time for the next three nights. Yes, sir. You got everything you want? Yes. Glasses? Revolver? Everything. Good luck, sir.
Who goes there? Special Constable Bob Rat. Pass. Quiet tonight. doing showing a naked light? I'm very sorry. Put it out. Yes. Haven't you read the regulations? No. That makes it all the worse. And you are school teacher. Oh, it's you, Mr. Brett. I'm very sorry. Oh, that's all right, miss. I'm single-handed, you see. And with all the fleet here, I've got to keep my eyes about me. Why, a German spy would give his head to get to Long Hope. But he wouldn't get by Bob Brett. Good night, miss. Good night. Was wollte die Patrouille? Ich sah das Licht. Sind wir allein? Natürlich. Wohin führt die Tür? In die Küche. Die Treppe? Zu dem Schlafzimmer. Me a fright. So, Sie sind voll an Thiel. Yes, Captain Hart. From now on, please speak in English. And eat in English? Make a staff. Thank you. How did you get onto the island? Had a mule lock and a fake passport. It's a gift of speaking English like a native, hmm? I shouldn't get very far without it. I'm a new school teacher. <laughs> school teacher. My name is Anne Burnett. Please call me by that in future. Anne Burnett. Are you mad? Wearing that uniform here? If I'm to be shot, it will be as an officer, not as a spy. Being a civilian, I've no such defenses. Hmm. 
I beg your pardon. A whole ham, white bread, and butter. Butter. A butter. These English are a long time feeling the pinch. I had no idea secret agents were such a comfortable profession. It has its uncomfortable moments. Talking of uncomfortable moments, school opens the day after tomorrow. <laughs> I wonder how I shall get on. So do I. In Germany, the girls no longer wear silk stockings. I think I'd better show you your room. It's upstairs. I haven't yet been told what I'm to do here. You'll be told tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Now. What are your orders? I beg your pardon? Your orders, Captain Hart. To report for duty to Follentil, to obey all her orders. Exactly. Now pick up your motorbike and go to bed. Do I take it to bed with me? Suit yourself. There's a nice parking base by the wash then. Locking me in. A woman comes to clean the house in the mornings. I can lock my own door. I think this is safer. May I come in? Come in. Good morning. Good morning. Your breakfast is in my room. There's a beautiful view from the window. Listen, Miss Burnett, I didn't come here for a holiday. I have more important things to do than to admire the view. All right. To sink 15 of those capital ships. <laughs> How? He'll tell you. Who is he? A British naval officer with a grudge against the service. He was in command of a destroyer, but a year ago he lost it in a collision. How? A wrong order. He'd been drinking. <laughs> a traitor and a drunkard. Quite an ornament for the British Navy. Where did this happen? Off Cyprus. HMS Connaught, February 16. Then you know. Of course, Commander Ashington. Lieutenant Ashington. He was dismissed his ship. Where did you meet him? At Leith, a month ago. And found that he had a price? Rather a high one. Paid by whom? Germany. Only by Germany? And me. Well, I suppose uh, you shall have to meet. Come down in a minute. Captain Hart. Suppose the rest of us sit down and get acquainted. Give him a drink, loosen him up a bit. I would rather get to business. 
Drink when you can in this job, that's my motto. Maybe confine our thoughts to the work before us. All alike, you Germans, one track minds. Draw the curtains, get the charts, and um, let's go. Here we are in a nutshell. For three years, we've had your fleet sitting on their bottoms in Kiel. We met at Jutland. That's why you haven't put your noses out since. Do you mean to say all that... All right, all right, we both won. The point is that with the Channel Fleet sitting on your doorstep and the Grand Fleet here in Scarpa, watching every move you make, you haven't a chance of getting into the Irish Channel and starting well, I know that. What's your plan? Um, two cruiser squadrons will shortly be sailing on a sweep down to the southern and southwest. I know that too. It's part of the routine. But wouldn't you give your eye teeth to know just when and where and how? You have that? Everything but the actual time of sailing. And I'll get you that, don't worry. What's where else? First and fifth. And the course? Here it is. A pencil line east of Swerner. Then if our submarines rendezvous... In Sandwick Bay? In Sandwick Bay? We could bag the lot. Exactly. Naturally, they may alter the course at the last moment, but I shall find out if they do. From whom? My brother. His flag captain. He too, hmm? Great Scott, no. It's a case of brotherly trust. When will this movement take place? Tomorrow? Next day? Any time. But you'll get plenty of notice. We can't take submarines off blockade duty on a supposition. Supposition, nothing. Those squadrons are going to sail. The date? I'll get it. Would be the biggest smash of the war. Then, uh, we understand each other. Uh, I hope so. To our next meeting. To our next meeting. Mind you, behave yourself. Mr. Ashton? What is your ship? The old war spy. I imagine she will not be going with this squadron. She's laid out for repairs, as usual. Pity. You see, children, when we look at this little island of ours and realize that she is the parent and protector of countries and continents a hundred thousand times greater than herself. I know you don't like it, but it isn't intended for a German audience. You almost persuade me to become a British subject. What do I say next? There's always that bit about an empire on which the sun never sets. But it needs explaining. Which bit does it go? East to west or west to east? <laughs> well, it worries me. I bet the children will know. <laughs> I shouldn't worry. You can teach them far more important things. How to get onto an island guarded like Gibraltar. How to twist the British and the German naval officer around your little finger. And a lot of other things. Never learned in school. Doesn't all this belong to an evening school for grown-ups? It is evening. And I'm grown-up. But you're not one of my pupils. Tell me, what became of the real Miss Burnett? You know the story of Little Red Riding Hood? Mm-hmm. It had a happy ending. That's where her story is different. She met with an accident? Yes, an accident. Were you present? I obey orders in my service. What a service. Have you ever fired a torpedo at an unarmed ship? That's different. It's certainly more wholesale. What right have you to look down on me? I obey my orders as you obey yours. We don't choose the jobs that are given us or the means of carrying them out. You and I are only parts of a machine for destruction. Like it or not. Where's the key? Here. Good night.
Thank you, children. That was very nice. Now you may dismiss. I'm obliged to you. Good day. Good day. Sail tomorrow. What time? 7 a.m. No changes. No changes. You get in touch with your ship tonight. You'll be ready to leave at 10 o'clock. Tonight? Of course. Very Good well. work. Yeah, what is all this? <laughs> For that tea leaves with me. This is the Reverend Hector Matthews. Is it? I mean, uh, how do you do? I'm sorry I can't shake hands. Uh, my name's John Harris. I'm looking for the school. For what purpose, may I ask? To see my fiancée, Miss Burnett. Miss Burnett did not tell me that she had any connection with the English Kirk. No, but she soon will have. Ah. Well, if you're making a stay on the island, we might get you have a room at the manse. It would be far cheaper than lodging at the post office. Would it? I mean, that's very kind. Maybe you'd bring your fiancée to take dinner with us tonight. Well, I... If you give me a meat coupons, Mrs. Matthews might manage a roast. Well, they're in my inside pocket and I'm rather cluttered up. Allow me. At 7 30 sharp. Uh, not sure how you want it to remain. Well, who cares what I want? Don't you see? I only see one thing, my orders. Where are they? Here. What do you mean, here? What were the actual orders? On completion of the mission, you were to be taken on board. On completion? Yes, on completion. And is it completed? Until your submarines come up with our squadrons, the job's only been begun. I think he's right. There's no other way of looking at it. Hmm. I shall deliver the message and tell Schuster to report tomorrow night for both of us. Now you're talking sense. Whoa! And... Who's that? School! I forgot to lock it! Oh, oh, I'm most awfully sorry. There, there must be another room. Come on in. Oh, thank you. I didn't expect to find officers billeted here, but I suppose it's difficult to find accommodation for everyone. Quite. We were just going to have tea. You must join us. Oh, no, really, thank you so very much. As a matter of fact, I came to find my fiancé, Miss Burnett. Uh, is she here? Milk and sugar? Oh, it's very kind of you. Yeah, let me take that. Oh, it's more than kind of you. It was rather heavy. Oh. Oh, how do you do? Good on. Oh, thank you. Would seem rather strange me not letting her know that I've arrived, wouldn't it? Your tea. Thank you. Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll give her a shout. I have a strong aversion against shouting. In fact, all of us have. Oh. oh well, in that case, she'll get quite a surprise when she comes down and finds that I'm here, won't she? Some cake. Uh, no, thank you. I brought her this gramophone, too. A whole heap of new record. Have you heard the soldiers march? It is rather a large trumpet, but it's got a beautiful tone. I say, that medal ribbon, I don't seem to recognize it. What is it? The Iron Cross, second class. Second class? Then you must be a prisoner of war. No. You are. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, they're not arrived yet. During a war, lateness for a meal is not only incivility, but criminal waste. I'm scared of the joint will burn. Well, I'm bringing it no. I will no wait longer. I'm greatly disappointed in the Reverend Harris. For what we're about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen.
Now, don't bite this. It's macaroni. Well, I think I should have some extra. You'd better wait here till I come back. Why? Stay. Well, hurry up. chosen a horrid night to pay calls. Obligations to society take precedence to the forces of nature. That's rather a compliment. A compliment was not my intention. Miss Barnett, we waited over an hour. Outside? At table. Oh, table. Precisely. He was upset about the joint. My concern had nothing to do with material matters. If you and the Reverend Harris were unable to come, courtesy demands that a message should be sent. Oh, then you were expecting us? Ah, you must have received our invitation. I'm afraid not. I had no idea. I find it hard to believe that he failed to convey it. I'm afraid he did. Extraordinary. Oh, I don't know, Hector. If I were your fiancé and hadn't seen you for a long time, I'm sure I'd forget about everything else. Perhaps you would explain. Well, you see, immediately after he arrived, he had rather a nasty attack. Attack? Yes, a sort of suffocation. He wasn't really able to say anything. Then he's ill. Oh, I'm greatly relieved. Hector! Well, I placed a room at his disposal. I couldn't understand why he failed to appear. Oh, but I tucked him up hours ago. Yep. With a hot water bottle. Very sensible, my A dear. very embarrassing situation. In the circumstances, I'm thinking Mrs. Matthews had better stay the night. Shall I? Goodness, no, there's not the least need for that. Miss Barnett, as a minister, I am the better judge. In your position, as as a there is always a danger that people will talk. In wartime? Oh, please don't worry. I'm used to managing things myself. Before leaving here, my conscience demands that I should discuss this matter with the Reverend Harris. I'm sorry, Mr. Matthews, but I won't have him disturbed to satisfy anybody's conscience. Good night. Then you, uh, you choose to defy me? Not at all. But this is my house and I please myself in it. We'll see what the education committee and the Kirk session will have to say. Good night, here. Good night. I understand, my dear, but he'll be fighting his conscience the whole night. Caroline! Good night. Good night, good night. Good night dear. Good night. Sandwich Bay. Mm -hmm. What a haul. Should take two hours to reach the rendezvous. Over, sir. We've 15 U-boats concentrated with orders not to waste a single torpedo. Good. We could have bagged a couple of cinches, but for that order. Tomorrow at the same time, you'll report here to pick us up. Yes, sir. Bad luck missing a fight like this to play nursemaid to a woman. Mind your own business. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Schuster. Yes, sir? I nearly forgot. What is it, sir? Butter. Huh? Yeah. Sorry. Hmm. Come on. What happened to the message, girl? Oh, it's me. Never been so cold. Must be out of condition. Damn fellow left me sitting in my hair, though. <laughs> it's not our custom to entertain British naval officers during the war, however useful they may have been. What does it feel like to make history, huh? I'll make some coffee to keep our feet on the ground. <laughs> now, don't you keep him up. It's been a pretty strenuous evening, time you went to bed. Yes, you have some way to go. 
Supposing you set us an example. Come on, have a bit of tact. Can't you see we'd like to be together? It's only two hours till dawn. Somebody might be wondering what's become of you. I think I'll have another drink. Yes, do. After all, you have the whole day tomorrow to make your adieu. Good night. <laughs> Persuasive fellow, aren't you? Sleep well. That's better. You didn't give him much choice, did you? Oh, he's quite happy. He has his whiskey and he's swinging down the lane, confident that you are in love with him. And in one minute, I shall be swinging off to bed. Oh, no, no, no. I want to talk to you, but I want that coffee. It's four o'clock. Let's talk tomorrow. Tomorrow? Can't you see that an hour like this will never come again? Our job is done. In an hour, the submarines will be waiting. In two hours, we shall strike. And in a week, you and I will be in Kiel. How we'll celebrate. And then we'll make a trip to Berlin. I can see us lunching at the Hotel Adler. You'll have the Iron Cross in your handbag, and you will be the only girl in Berlin. In silk stockings. Silk stockings is my cue to go to bed. I have served under many commanders, but none I admire more than you. What will you do when you are home again? You just told me. A trip to Berlin, lunch at the Adlon. But after Berlin? Another job. Another Ireland, another Ashington. And another Captain Hard? Perhaps. Please let me go. Commander Teal, don't forget that you have won a victory. And that a good commander must celebrate with this man. If I'm in command, I order you to let me go. the worst ten minutes I've ever spent. Me too. It's all over now. Yes, darling. You are a little fool. What do you mean by coming out here without a coat? Running risks like that? Where is he? Upstairs, locked in his room. <laughs> You're a marvel. Sir?
Special Constable Bob Bratz, sir. You know who I am? Your Commander Blackhawk, sir. When the patrol arrives, tell him to stand by. Nobody to go in or out. Where's your armlet? When I heard there were some German spies about, sir, I took it off and put it in my pocket so that I could get up close to them without being recognized. Well, keep your eyes skinned. Aye, aye, sir. David, you won't have him arrested until I've left the house, will you? Give us credit for a little imagination. Besides, he's safe enough where he is. Couldn't you let him go back to his ship? He would at least have had a fighting chance. Too risky. He might have met someone who knew the real Fraulein Teal or the real Ashington. And then? What is it? The destroyer flotilla. They've been loading up extra depth charges all night. The result of our midnight labors. In a few hours, there won't be any U-boats in Sandwick Bay. Just a few spots of grease drifting out to the North Sea. I think I feel rather sick. Look here. Take a bullet, please. Woman, your name will go down in history. I know. Now, bustle upstairs and get your things. I'm taking you straight down to the St. Magnus. She sails in an hour. I haven't got anything of my own. Everything I have is on Burnett's. Then here we go. I'll be back in half an hour to pull him in. Stand by. Aye, aye, sir. Beg pardon, sir. You wouldn't like us to save you the trouble? No. I have personal reasons for doing this job myself. You'll look after her, Captain Ratter, won't you? I'll be on the bridge, sir. So I've had my cabin here cleared for your lady's use. It's very kind of you. It's a wee bit pleased, but it's warm and you'll have it to yourself. That's the main thing. Thank you. Walter! Here, Walter! I'm warning you, unless I get a day in port to work on my bottom ends, it'll no be a day you'll be losing, but a week. You will see about it, James. I hope so. Excuse me. The parson. I've left him tied up in the schoolroom. Oh, poor Mr. Harris. To the rescue. Goodbye. David, you will take care of yourself, won't you? He did. Body. Done. All present the corrector. Thanks. Two of you around the back. You two. Keep an eye on the window, but keep out of sight. I don't want any casualties. Aye, aye. Two on the road. And two. The rest of you guard the front of the house. Keep him close to the wall. Fenton, you follow me. Do you think he's going to shoot, sir? Wouldn't you? You find a padre in the schoolroom, all trussed up. Cut him loose and hold him till I come. You'll be rather annoyed. You stay there. Captain Hart, this is Commander Blacklock of the Royal Navy. If you'll throw your gun out of the window, open the door and surrender, you'll be treated as a prisoner of war. Otherwise, you'll be shot. Nobody in the storeroom, sir. What? Huh? <laughs> Untie the poor devil! Sir, I'll tell him you caught the boat. And I ask myself why, if everything is as it should be, I should have been prevented from seeing the Reverend Harris. Well, I can tell you. Mr. Harris was tied up in the schoolroom because he was a nuisance. And you're very lucky not to have suffered the same fate. If you'd met Commander Blacklock, you would have. 
I, I cannot pretend to understand. Well, I'll help you. An attempt was made by German spies to murder the real Miss Burnett and put one of their women agents in her place. Fortunately, it failed. They dropped her over a cliff, but by a hundred to one chance, a patrol boat fished her out. She was able to tell them enough for our chaps to grab the agent the moment she showed her nose in Thurso. Then someone had the bright idea of replacing her with a counter-spy. It was short notice, but we were lucky to find someone brave enough to volunteer. The young woman that you know is Miss Burnett. Then the Miss Burnett at the schoolhouse is not the Miss Burnett who should be at the schoolhouse, nor the Miss Burnett the Germans intended to put at the schoolhouse. In fact, she's not Miss Burnett at all. Substantially correct. Aye, but then who is she? That, my dear sir, comes under the heading of official secrets. What's the matter, Blacklock? Hard, sir. Made a break for it and got away. The German? Locked Harris in his room and then took his clothes. Excuse me, sir. Signals? Sir. General call to all units and police patrols on the island. Aye. He won't get away with it, sir. He can't do any harm. German prisoners. They look half starved to me. I suppose they're off a U-boat. Blow up off the strong side. On one of their own mines. One of their own? <laughs> Do you think they'll see the joke? Perhaps not. <laughs> uh, here, by the right. Rest. By the right. Rest. But, but here, you're the right-hand man. Ich verstehe nicht. Ja. Here, I might as well be talking to a lot of stuffed dummies. All right, stand easy, you half-starved, gloomy lot of mackerel. Oh, what'll I do with them, Captain? Split them up, for or not. Steward! Aye, aye, sir. Give them some coffee. Poor devil. Hey, Walter. Well, James, I don't like it. I'm no a superstitious man, but I don't like it. Mind your engines, James, and I'll mind the ship. Ah, fine chance I get to mind my engines, I don't think. Six weeks I've been trying to fix new liners on these bottom ends. I tell you what, that I don't like these Dutchmen. They're Jonas. Pure Jonas. Why didn't they take them on the Sydney all the prisoners of war going there? And they're crowded out with Liberty men. Oh, they'll gain eight trouble. Four in the forecastle and four in the saloon. We are sentry to each four. <laughs> One turp at some cell, couldn't they get to them? Ah. Hmm, hmm. Maybe. Sorry, Father, they only speak Bosch. Quiet, or you die. Ich bin Kapitän Hart. Ich übernehme das Kommando über das Schiff. Die Mannschaft wird unschädlich gemacht, ihr seid frei. Vorwärts! From Weir to Leaf Under is overdue. Sorry we ain't got no sausage. That's all you Jerry's eat, ain't it? 
Look, the German sailors. Help them there. Help them there. Push them the rocket pistol. Get off my bridge, whoever you are. Drop that pistol, Captain. You are my prisoner. Get off my bridge and I'll fill your belly with green and yellow lights. Carry the vehicle. Your ship is in my hands, Captain. And who might you be? I'm a German naval officer. In those clothes? They will do for the present. Where's your wireless, Captain? There is none. No wireless? No German went out of the house while I was on duty, Admiral. I handed over to the patrol. There were nine of them and only one of me. But didn't you suspect this parson fellow on the pier? Where were your eyes, man? Well, he jumped aboard the St. Magnus just as she was casting off. I did deliver your message to him, Commander. Huh? Ah, yes, yes, yes. You've told us that before. That'll do, Bob. You've got to give this fellow hard credit, sir. I'll give him credit for having the most infernal cheek. But he can't get away, sir. Signals. Sir? Wireless crab stand, sir. Arrest German officer on St. Magnus masquerading as parson. Stop. Wireless patrols. All patrols. Order St. Magnus to heave to and await destroyer. I repeat that back. Go below. Go. Act on. Brauche zwei Mann. Fehlt aber Die Mannschaft und Passagiere bleiben hier unter Bewachung. Mannschaft und Passagiere bleiben hier unter Bewachung. Folgen Sie mir. Bleiben Sie ruhig. Kein Ton. Munition. Ein Kasten. Gut, gib her. How did you escape? But I must thank you for. Sentiment has always stopped women from being first class fighters for until, or should I say, Miss Bernetto? Mrs. Blacklock. So, that's one secret you kept well. How considerate. You may have captured the ship, but what good will it do you? I shall lay a course for the submarines at Sandwick. But you can't do that, you must. I am no longer under your orders. But the whole channel is full of mines. We shall both take our chance. This doesn't only mean you and me. Quite right. It means the lives of hundreds of my comrades. Captain Hart, the women and children in the ship, old people. Their deaths will be at your door, not mine. We are at war. Perhaps you forget that, as I did for a while. You're English. I am German. We are enemies. I like that better. And I. It simplifies everything. Come. The end of the course. Ost. Ost, Captain. Now watch the matter. Attention all. You are being held as prisoners of war. I want no noise, no panic. Anybody who disobeys orders will be shot. One exception. A19, A24, and A7. St. Magnus sighted by all three patrols. She's still on her right course, sir. Yes, there are eight German prisoners on that ship. Yeah, what are you doing here, sir? You better go home. Uh, thank you. Thank you. If they join forces with a desperate man like Hart... Message from A17, sir. Not sighted. She's over you. She shaped a different course between A7 and A17. Sandwich Bay. My wife's on that ship. Orderly. Yes, sir. I want to see the officer commanding the destroyer flotilla. Pretty good, sir. I'm sorry, Blacklock. I'm afraid you'll have to forget personal affairs. Yes, sir. We believe this in Magnus to have been captured by German prisoners who are making a rush for Sandwick. Commander Blacklock will advise you of the course likely to be taken. You'll go out through Swither Sound and cut her off. She's to be sunk, sir. If they won't surrender.
Skipper! Skipper! Are you there, Walter? Eh? Oh. Well, look. We cannot keep up this pace much longer. It's murdering my parents. The fearful pressure he's put on my engines. It's a wonder the chief puts up with it. Where have they taken us? Due east, but my reckoning. We'll put a patrol watch us any minute if we're low already. We're all in the hands of Providence. No, you're not. You're in the hands of a man who cares nothing for his life or yours. And it's all my fault, because I forgot we were at war. Forgot the war means that it kills every fine, decent human feeling. Can you shake her up a bit? No, she's flat out now. of the old tub yet. Perhaps they've altered course again. Mm, not likely. Have a look, Felix. Isn't that the St. Magnus? It's her, all right. What are you doing off her course? Looks a bit fishy. What a cinch. And we've got to save all the torpedoes. Nothing in the orders to stop us sending off a couple of shells. Stand by to service. Guns crew, action stations. Objective steamship, short range. Somebody's him falling through the bridge. Bridge? Okay. Fire! There's firing around that headland. Better take a look then. Hold the course, number one. Come up on the deck. Hurry up. 
By the star. They've taken to the boat, sir. Captain, look! Destroyer! Dash dive! She's been shelled by a U-boat. We'll have a crack at the number one. Objective, submarine! It was my own ship that sunk us. Come on now, Messi, come on. Come on, hurry. What are you doing here? Get off my bridge and get into one of the boats. You don't mind, Captain? I'd rather stay. Please yourself, that's your business. Captain, have you got a cigarette? I never smoked them, but I'll have a pipe if you want it. I've never smoked a pipe. You've left it a bit late to learn. I can see her. 